before we get started, I just want everybody to recognize that my co-presenter here, Michael Rao, it is his birthday today. So let's say happy birthday, Michael. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks, uh, Stephen. That was nice. You bet. So uh, thank you all for coming to, well, I mean, you're all here at the App Promotion Summit, but thank you for coming to our session, the coolest session. Um, so I'm Stephen Aldrich. I founded a company called Ragnarok. We partner with Iterable, and we're an agency uh, really uh, who helps clients across many different industries kind of realize their retention win back strategies. So I'm here to help present on some of those strategies that we've realized for some of our clients. And Michael? Uh, I'm Michael Rao. I'm a senior solutions consultant with Iterable. Our platform is a marketing automation, uh, customer engagement system that's, that works cross-channel, allows you to communicate in a deeply personalized way with all of your customers, no matter where they are. Bam. So this is an interactive session, which means at some point you're going to have to all stand up. There's uh, things on the back, and we'll have you put your name on a sticky note, and you'll throw your name with that, or you throw that sticky note with your name on it on which one you think is the winner. Now, this is an interactive, so again, you're going to have to stand up, move around, which is good, because you've all been sitting, hopefully, not that long. Um, so let's dive into it. First, let's talk about a shared definition of what a customer lifecycle is, because everybody has a different definition, so we're just going to use a shared one here. So first thing, you start out new, right? This is a prospect, new to the app, maybe a fresh download, new first day. This is sort of a definition that we use to sort of dictate, hey, this is where I started. I'm a new user. Then eventually I become a non-X user, non-subscriber, non-purchaser, non-something, right? Everybody has a different type of app. And this is typically like seven days later, five days later, a day later. It depends on your life cycle of your app. Eventually you fall into this bucket we call lapsed. You know, you were kind of engaged and you're not engaged anymore. And then you get to this point where eh, it's been a year, six months, two years, some people wait five, um, and we eventually just sunset you, right? We don't talk to you anymore. You're not engaged with us anymore. You're costing us money, and we're not making anything off of you. On the flip side, converters, purchasers, whatever you are, right? Not everybody has an app that sells things. You have sort of a similar thing. You're a new conversion. You're a post-conversion user. Maybe we want to get you to uh, convert again. You're re-up. You know, you're going to reconvert or do something that's going to generate that conversion again, and then you're an OTP. One time purchaser. That's right. I hate that definition. But essentially, we've sort of on the sunset phase, we sort of realized you're only going to buy from us once. That's cool. See you later. So what does this mean? How, what, what does all this kind of relate to? So think of this as the entire life cycle of that journey, right? The user, they come in. Our goal is to retain them on their first day, right? We want them to sort of stay, right? They don't just want to come in, download, and then we never see them again. Then you have the sort of non-X, again, or post-purchase, you know, like, hey, we want to retain you for your first week or your second week or however long that is. How do we keep you there? We personalize content. So we have a good cadence of communication, things like that. Eventually, you come back to this point where you're lapsing and we need to win you back. We need you to come back, re-engage. And then you're sunset, right? When you're sunset, you're gone. There's not really much we're going to do with you there. So essentially, we are going to give you some tips to really focus on new, post, non-X, um, first week retention, and then win back when they're lapsed. Win back, of course, you all probably have a lot of experience with. First, first week, probably everybody here has done a welcome series or something like that at some point in their career. And if you've been in your career for a while, you've probably done about 30 of them and refresh them every six months. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some tips for that. Let's move on. So first thing here on our first day of retention, right? So let's define this really quickly. First day of retention means I download the app, I have 24 hours, right? And then I come back or I don't come back. How many people in general, everybody has a problem with this, right? 20% people come back day two throughout. 80% people leave day one, never come back. Does that sound familiar to people? Maybe 10% don't come back after day one. Maybe it's a little bit higher. You know, it's a lot of variance there. But as we know, most people download the app and they never come back, right? And so how do we get them to come back, right? So a couple of great strategies we want, uh, that we sort of think about in a typical playbook, right? And again, a lot of you folks probably already do this, but getting it in place is what really makes it really helpful. I mean, first and foremost is get a, get something to message them on, right? Because if they're in your app and they're leaving, they're never coming back. Um, and you know that you're never going to be able to get them back and you didn't collect any information on them except for the fact that you paid a bunch of money to Apple to download them or to Google or to, or to Meta or whoever sort of targeted them or, or you did your targeting on and get them. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you acquire something about them, an email, a push subscription, a, a text message, anything, right? Just get something so that way you can actually retain them. 
The second thing is, and this is sort of the rule of thumb with anything revolving retention, is from the point at which you end your session, you are going to completely forget everything that happened before that over time, right? And that, that time really starts immediately after that session ends, and it just degrades pretty violently. And by the end of, a, of your first week, you probably have completely forgotten the thing that you downloaded, the brand that it was, your experience it was, the need that you had, right? And so that, that degrading process can happen pretty quickly. And so the idea here is on their first day, you really want to get them back as soon as you possibly can. And I know that goes against things like, well, what about the general experience and user experience, things like that? Definitely something to factor in. But bear in mind that like, if most people don't come back on their first day, the chances are you're probably going to be less annoying and more effective in retaining them than you are if you sort of wait and wait and hope that they come back or maybe wait that 24-hour delay because you're a little bit worried about whether or not they're going to hate you for messaging them. So the again, kind of goes against that general rule of thumb that you really want to get them really quickly within like an hour or two hours, generally speaking. And what about people who didn't give me anything? Well, there's a couple things you could do, right? Prompt, soft prompt, you know, like, hey, you want to hang out? Here's, here's a push notification prompt or in-app notifications for things like collecting email or phone number. And you can make those fun and dynamic and not wait for your uh, app development team to, you know, push up a new release that has the new thing that you're trying to test. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use different tools to kind of get at the same type of experiment. Okay. Let's talk about, and this is where we all are going to get up. We're going to get around. And essentially, we're going to talk about a company here. And you're going to tell me which one you think was the most successful. Okay. So we have an online veterinarian company. They have a trial. And in their trial, essentially, you can sign up. And for 24 hours, you can ask any question you want to a veterinarian. Huge. Huge on the App Store success, right? I have a question, you know, like, oh, my dog's throwing up. What should I do? You know, things like that. So people would download this app. They would ask that question. Then they would go away and never come back, right? Because they got the answer to the question they were looking for. Huge problem when your business model revolves around people actually signing up and staying with that subscription. So they had this huge success in acquisition, but not a whole lot in actual retention. So what we decided to do was sort of test three different types of strategies to see which one could we actually get them to retain longer and to be a more profitable user. So we have three options in the back. And I'll explain what each one is. Everybody will stand up. Woo! Here we go. And uh, you'll grab a sticky note and a pen. Write your name on it. Think which one they did. Save on flea and tick. So the option, the objective is that they talk to a vet, right? And that's, that's how they download the app. Save on flea and tick is, hey, did you know you can save a little bit more money? So everybody can go by, move your way to the back, get a post-it note, write your name on it. Uh, anybody wants to lead the way there? <laughs> go for it. Talk to a vet. So, hey, you just talked to a vet. Maybe you should have it again. Did you have another question? And then read tips. You know, here's some ideas. Here's here's a here's a let's go back to your veterinarian, or here's here's how to plan for your next vet visit. Here's why you should do immunizations, things like that. So jump on over, head on over. And we're looking for what you think is going to be the best and most effective strategy for getting those users to not churn that first day. And just as a warning, too, we're going to ask people to volunteer why they picked one or the other. So we're not going to force anybody to talk, but if you'd like to, come if up with you some don't ideas. want to, put a fake name down. We won't know who you are. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk to a vet. We got one. <laughs> All right, um, Billy, Billy C A A N. Why read tips? All right, so read tips because it's additive, whereas uh, so, you know, coupon great for save on flea and tick. Talk to a vet. You already just did that. All right, let's do uh, Melanie. Melanie L., save on flea and tick. Why? Oh, hey, Melanie. Hi. Um, I, I figured that like the discounts are always a good way for people to kind of come back, and once you have them intrigued, like they might just be more inclined to check back and see what else the app has to offer. I love it. Next slide, Michael. What's the big reveal? Bam! Save on flea and tick. Ow! 9.5% incrementality. But it didn't win, right? Talk to a vet one, interestingly enough. People talk to vets, and then they leave. And then what do people do immediately after they ask a question and get an answer to it? Remember that they had another question. That's right. And that was really, really effective. The problem was, is we had this huge influx of people coming in to talk to vets. And we ended up creating a bottleneck of people having a queue when they first came in, which is even worse experience. So it decreased overall conversion. So ultimately, save on plain tick was the better option because it had the same level of incrementality, or slightly less incrementality, but 
bonus revenue from sales. So I think this is kind of an interesting way as you think about your first day retention, right? So here's like three different ways you can approach the same problem. But ultimately, sometimes thinking outside the box of what did the person come in here for? What can I add more to their journey is a great way to get them to come back. So I think this is always like an interesting thought exercise to do, especially when you go back to your homes or works or whatever you go to, uh, to work, your thought spaces um, that you can think about like, okay, well, what else do I have to work with? And maybe I can just try experimenting with that. Because as you can see, this almost looks like throwing paint on the wall in terms of trying out different things. You know, just be surprised what the result is. Yeah, but it's wild that experimentation can help you figure this kind of stuff out, right? Like, Man. we're not we're not walking in before we do all of our campaigns and putting sticky notes on a board to decide what we're going to do. We're running experiments. That's something that Iterable can help with. I wanted to talk a little bit about one of our customers, Fit. Um, they've got a free trial app for working out at home, kind of like your Peloton app or whatever it is that you use when uh, whenever you're doing setups in front of the TV, if you're like me. Um, and what they were looking to do was increase conversions from that free trial into a paid membership. And they were seeing like a 56% drop off of users who would sign up in that first day, do the free trial, then they would leave. So what they decided to do was run a bunch of experiments to figure out what the right campaign was, hit people cross channel, not just on the app, but on email and in-app notifications and everything. And what they saw was an increase, a 12% increase in first day activations and a 15% increase in that trial to paid. So the results are there. You just have to make sure that you're running those experiments, doing this exact exercise that we're doing here, and you can ultimately come up with that right campaign. Anybody have questions? We're happy to pass the microphone out. Then we'll move on to first week. First week. Why is it first week and not just first day plus first week? Why is it defined separately? Great question. Because first day is often not thought of, right? So that's why I separate that thought process out to help people sort of realize I, I, if they don't come back on that first day, then it doesn't matter if there's a first week retention strategy because I didn't get them back to come back to begin with. So I like to separate these out. Think of first week as day two to seven, right? Generally speaking, first week. Um, let's move along. So some general sort of tactics about that, right? Everybody has a welcome. Everybody has a nurture series, right? Or some people don't, and you're doing it for the first time. Essentially, the only change you should ever make to your welcome and nurture series is because they degrade over time in terms of their remembering of the experience that they had with you is front load that puppy, right? Day two, day three, day four, then day seven. So that's really a great way to kind of get a little bit more of that retention in upfront. And then try to use things that they did in the app. Did they? Are there any behavioral cues you can lay on? Uh, did they have browse products? Did they view screens? Are they in a abandonment registration flow? Did they anything that you can use? Any little piece of information that you can get to make your content a little bit more specific is always helpful. And wildly helpful too is when you can actually bring that back and surface it into that messaging content as well. So even if it's something as simple as hey, well, my thought process is they browse these things and they abandon, so maybe they weren't interested at all. But a lot of experiments will show is that even if you just describe the things that they saw, they're more likely to engage simply because they don't, simply because it's, it, they don't remember what they were doing, right? You have to remember that people forget what they're doing in your app pretty quickly, right? Like, we all have pretty bad memories um, as a general consensus, right? Some people are great. Um, so we're just trying to trigger that memory process of what they were doing there in the first place. And then kind of the general things that you would expect, right? multiple channels. We keep collecting more data in that first week. We got their email, let's get their phone number. We got their push preferences, let's get their email. Just keep prompting, right? Eventually you'll get something. Um, and then, it, you know, for those that you don't, then, the, then you don't. But at least you can kind of reclaim those users who don't quite convert right away. And then lastly is like, probably most people here don't represent news apps and things like that, where your normal kind of leaning in is like, well, I have fresh content constantly every five minutes. There's always a reason to come back to the app. Well, you can create those experiences using things like in-app notifications. You don't have to wait for new features to be released. You can make up fresh content, if you will, as part of a user experience by just having uh, in-app things or things that they can dismiss as, as part of a reason for them to come back. So some of this just comes down to like, I might not have engineering support, but I have an in-app notification tool and I can leverage that to kind of create that experience that I'm looking for. Okay, next prompt, baby. Standing back up. Online therapy app. So essentially think that similar to the first one, except they have a one-week trial. You can schedule some time with a therapist, have a little chit-chat, mental health awareness. Um, and essentially what they found, they did a lot of analysis, and they found that users who visit the app at least three times in their first week are 60% more likely to convert than those that do anything less than that, right? So which strategy do you think yielded the highest retention rate? Was it 
book your next appointment within that trial period. So seven days, again, you can book multiple appointments. Was it tips for treating your condition? So we would know what their condition was. Or was it convert your trial offer? So buy right now um, before the trial expires. Stand on up, put your name down, vote for what you think was the winner. Dun, 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 dun. Da, 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 da. By the way, I have a 12 week old, so that's why you're going to hear a lot of bouncing and dad things, just because, you know, new dad vibes going on here pretty deeply. Personally, when I do a Starbucks order, I give the name Cedric. That's not my name. And then I forget that I gave them that name, so they'll call it, and I'm just like standing around. Where is Steven's yeah. mocha latte? Yeah, where's yeah. my mocha latte? All right, let's let's take a look here. So, book your appointment, tips for treating your condition, convert your trial offer. Nice. Let's say, uh, okay, so Shannon, tips for treating your condition. Why do you think this one was a winner? Who's Shannon? Shannon. All okay. right. It's offering to solve. Shannon. Yeah. Oh. I think it's offering to solve whatever they're looking to solve with this platform. I it's like that. Them a solution. Solution focused. Very smart. Convert your trial offer, uh, Urinda. I like that name. That's cool. I use the same logic that was last time that people like free stuff and any discounts. So that would make them come back. Smart. <laughs> I like that. You're probably really good at taking tests. That's good logic path there. Um, and uh, Anella, Anella, we have an Anella in the room. Ooh, fake name. I love it. I could have also not pronounced it correctly. Oh, Ariella. That is an R. You I'm just, sorry. It's okay. You can't read my handwriting. I um, can't read my own I, either. I selected that one because I think people are more likely to come back if they book on the spot. Very smart. Michael, what's the big reveal here? What do we got? What do we know? I like that answer. Tips for treating your condition. This is interesting, right? Because remember that people come in, they book their appointment. So they would have already talked to a therapist at this point, kind of like an intro thing. Um, but the interesting thing about that is that because they just had an intro session, right? And typically in an intro session with therapists, you don't really get into the meat of the problem right away, right? It's kind of like, let's get to know each other, see if you like me. And so the idea here is that we can kind of leverage a little bit more of like acute treatment um, option to sort of drive that kind of incremental traffic back into the app. So again, we just had to get them back three times, right? That was the idea. So this kind of helped increment a lot of that traffic back because then they can go and actually find a little bit more of the solution they were looking for. Whereas the other ones, they did drive some traffic, but kind of more typical of what we were seeing before, which was like the 3%, the 2%, nothing uh, large enough to really lift the uh, to really lift the metric the way we were looking for. Interesting thing about convert your trial offer, though, it was successful in terms of driving incremental conversions. As you would expect, you message something, it drives uh, drives some results. But because the volume was the that conversion was only relative to 1.6 percent of the traffic, whereas in the other case, we're driving 12 percent more traffic. So the incrementality across the board was slightly higher in terms of total number of people converting because that stayed the same. Um, so it didn't really outweigh in terms of total amount of revenue that we were driving. Yeah, and I think, I think that speaks to, I'm going to talk about this in just um, another case study here in just a moment, but I think it speaks to building your campaigns around what those leading indicators are for the conversion event itself. So, of course, we want people to stay on the app, but we can't send them notifications to say, please stay on the app. We want to send things that say, like, oh, let's go ahead and create our account. Let's build out our profile. Let's you know get tips for treating your dog's condition, because these are the things that are leading indicators of that ultimate conversion. Um, personalization, obviously, is super important. Um, we saw with the Dirt a 2x increase in weekly retention rate just from doing things like geo-personalization, uh, preferences around campsites. This is kind of like Airbnb, but you stay in a tent. Um, so <laughs> super cool. Um, but I want to talk about Redfin because this is one of a this is a really cool case study where they're using. I mean, would this would this be a Martech conference if we didn't talk a little bit about AI, right? Um, so they're using Iterable's predictive goals in order to not just predict the likelihood that people are going to convert on getting a home tour, but also to give them through explainable AI, like what are those leading indicators and how much of this is actually explaining conversion on that ultimate goal. 
And so what they were seeing is, you know, not just creating an account, but also going in there and looking at X number of homes over a specific period of time. These are leading indicators for ultimately booking that home tour. And when they were able to effectively target based off of people's scores and build their campaigns to drive conversion of those leading indicators, then they saw a 9% lift in conversion meeting with an agent actually doing a home tour. Yes. What's considered an active state? So people who are logging in within the last, I think, 30 or 60 days. I forget what the actual, actual definition is. But um, it's people who are going through and actually meeting with agents rather than just cruising and looking at um, looking at real estate posts. Anybody else? All right. Last one, Stephen. Love this. Winning back lost users. Oh, the ban of all marketers' existence, right? Level of effort, level of results, never match up. First tip for win, for win back is don't do it manually, right? It's never worth it. You're never going to get as much as you want out of it. Doesn't matter how big that promo is. You know it's going to be your lowest performing revenue number. So generally what I recommend off the bat is automate it as quickly as possible. Get a definition. Day 30, day 60, day 90, the point at which you would say this user is lapsed, that's when you should start your win back uh, flow. And generally speaking, no matter what you do, usually at best, it's like a 2% reclamation, right? It is not that high. I've seen things a little bit higher than that, but it's very, very rare, right? And so generally speaking, you're really going to want to just automate something so you can have that in your back pocket, and then you can kind of optimize that over time should there be more opportunity for it. Generally speaking, you want your win back flow to run for four weeks. The reason why is, again, they have sort of disconnected with you. You're, you're kind of doing it. It's almost like shots on goal, right? You're just trying to kick the ball and see if you can land it in from half, halfway across the field. Any soccer fans here? Um, and so the idea there is just to kind of really uh, to, to sort of have a, a, a position and to keep, uh, keep moving on it. And, and hopefully, you'll be able to get them in that one shot. But again, they're so far gone from you at this point that they're unlikely to really engage. So it is bit, a bit of a numbers game. Another thing, too, multiple channels. Typically, what happens in a lot of winback strategies don't uh, fail is because everybody focuses on just sending email, which is great but because um, it's cheap, but you do want to try all the different channels you have to at least engage them on something. And then lastly, ooh, I forgot to finish that slide, <clears throat> uh, but the uh, different formats here. So everybody loves a good letter from customer. You know what I'm talking about, right? Letter from customer success. Like it looks like, you know, Rebecca from, you know, uh, I don't know, customer success associate came in and, uh, and and sort of wrote you a letter in an email. Everybody knows what I'm talking about, but it wasn't her. It was you as the marketer, like writing the thing and finding some random person being like, can you sign this? Yeah. Or you're the signer and you're definitely not that role. Half of you are guilty of that in here for sure. Um, or do things like direct prompts, right? And this sort of goes against, you know, uh, the, the, the general idea of like, well, what if I were to like, ask them something, well, they're not going to respond anyway. Not really true. I mean, sometimes you have to just be a little bit more aggressive in your, in your ask. Like, hey, did you figure this out? You know, did you buy a couch? That was interesting. I tested one time. Really, really successful, by the way, um, for a furniture company. But things like that are just so like, oh, I, I did. You know, like sometimes it gets people to respond to something, interestingly enough. And you can use things like push notifications with buttons. And they can say things like, I did, I did it. And that can kind of dictate what journey you bring them on. So kind of think about like, you got to think outside the box with these things. Cause again, you're talking about an audience who doesn't care about you anymore for the most part. Um, so you're trying to like win them back, right? Win back. All right. Last prompt here. I promise you won't have to stand up again after this. Well, I mean, you'll have to leave the room eventually, but okay. So financial advice app, uh, they want to reactivate old users. They have not logged in in more than three months. That's their win back definition, their lapse definition, right? Three months. So the problem with that is they collect credit score on people, but they, if they don't log in every month, that score does not refresh. So essentially, they have a scale, sort of a stale credit score, and they want people to refresh because they make money on people clicking through ads and signing up for credit cards. So essentially, what they did is they took their last credit credit score, so good, excellent, bad, poor, you know, whatever the different definitions are, and they sort of said, all right, well, let's use this as a segmentation and see if we can win back the audience kind of based on that. So towards the back, which do you think yielded the highest win back rate? Was it a strategy around giving them tips to increase their credit limit? Was it a strategy around refreshing their credit score, log back in, do it again? Or was it reviewing their recent activity? Everybody can go up, write your name on a post-it note, and slap it on. Wait, wait. Interesting observation, right? How many people went up on the first one when it was first day retention? 70% of the room. How many people went up when it was first week retention? 40% of the room? How many people went up for win back? 
hero right here, one guy. So do you think you can kind of see the observation, right? When you think about it, it's you sent the same message three times, Stephen. What are you doing, right? It happens in reality too. So it's a nice little observation for everybody to kind of see that. I like to do that little reveal at the end, but you know. And now everybody gets up because they're like, I want to be one back. Put me back. <laughs> You know what the great thing about being at an app con uh, conference is? Is if you're on your phone, you're like, I'm just studying. Yeah, you're just working. Yeah, I'm like, I'm you're apping just, it. You're sending custom events. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm seeing what my analytics team is doing. Yeah, I'm just yeah. creating a more robust profile for myself. That's right. <laughs> I've always, I've always wanted to like see my profile on mm -hmm. multiple apps and see like, what did you capture about me? Yeah. You know, like if they were to look at my like, um, <laughs> yeah. All right, it's all scam. I'm not going to ask you why you chose it. Go to the next slide. <laughs> So what actually won? So tips to increase your credit limit. Why? This is interesting, right? Remember that we constantly said the same thing to them over and over again, right? Refresh your score, log in and refresh your score. Um, and, and think about things like review recent activity. So like we're just kind of giving them things that we already had, so, had said to them before. Tips to increase your credit limit is not something where we typically talk to them about because they're getting that in the app when they're logged in, right? That's sort of the content that they get, and they get credit cards and things like that, and that's how they convert. So what we did is we decided to take that content in the app that people were engaging with anyway, move it forward in the, well, I guess back in the experience because we're in a win-back moment. Um, and what we saw is that we actually able to reclaim about 1.2% of people by getting them to uh, engage with the thing that they're actually engaging with in the app after they logged in. So this was a really kind of interesting finding because it allowed us to leverage what was already out there and use it again. Um, so yeah, again, thinking outside the box a little bit and then kind of leveraging what you have can really uh, have, a, have a great impact on something as dreadful as win back. Yeah, leveraging what you have and, and staying top of mind. Too. Right on. You know, the review your recent activity email, we've all gotten that. It comes in all the time. I mean, I get it at least once a month from Chase or whoever it is that's sending me these, these credit updates. I don't think I've ever opened one of those. Has anybody here ever reviewed their recent activity? Yeah, me neither. Um, we <laughs> kind of separate to that. Uh, Lola is a customer of Iterables, and uh, there's kind of two different types of two different types of customers here. We've got our subscribers, and then we have our one-off, like a la carte purchaser, uh, purchasers. And what Lola was doing was actually aiming that win back at that a la carte, convert them to subscribers, yes, but really just have them continue to be top of mind. Have Lola continue to be top of mind to those customers, and you know, creating those really targeted campaigns to ensure that you know when I think about these kinds of products, that I'm thinking about Lola. All right, so we're going to wrap up here. Um, so uh, I just want to give a, a quick background about us and uh, my glamour shots here, apparently. I did not build this slide. Um, so just again, we're a, a Ragnarok. We're a full service. Uh, we're essentially a blend of MarTech solutions engineers with marketing acumen. So we help companies build the types of experiences that we just went through to think through the campaigns of how to do a first day retention through a win back, and then the underlying data that helps make those uh, uh, dreams come to life. And uh, I'm fortunate to work at Iterable, where I get to see Steven all the time and work with the Ragnarok team. Um, we are an AI-powered customer engagement tool working across all different channels and really you know, that platform to help, or help our customers reach their customers. Right on. So thank you. Yeah, thank you all so much. So.